Hey, welcome back to the show, guys. We're using the Marshall DSL 20H today, along with a few EQs and ODs, and just trying to transform that actual sound of the amp to sound more like an Engel Savage 120, and try and capture that tone that Gary Holt used on a shovel-headed kill machine. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you know we've used the Marshall DSL 20H for just about all the Exodus tones, and it does them all really well, and it's just fantastic for that Langner mod of JCM 800 that Gary Holt owns. But for the shovel-headed kill machine, he went and used the Engel Savage 120, and these things just have a really unique tone. I've just found they're just really heavy in those low mids, and they've just got a really aggressive sort of take. But, but using some parametric EQs in the effects lit, as well as the front end, and just push with a little bit of OD, I think I've managed to get close to that really mid-focus snarl that those savages have. But I'll just quickly run through the gear that I'm using just so you guys can replicate it yourselves or fill in the blanks where you need to. But I've got my LTD 600 Alexi Leo and this has an EMG 81 active in the bridge. And outputting through the Marshall DSL 20H, we're actually going through the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X where I'm simulating the Dave Mustaine 412 with the V30s inside with a single SM57 pushed up to the dust cap. And just off the cone a little bit, I think in the software it's about 30% off the cone. And that just gives you a really cool sound. I'm really liking that cabinet. And then onto the pedal board here, I'll just quickly explain what's going on. But this is how I like to have things set up, just if I'm chasing like an aggressive overdriven tone. It's not something I'd do for ambience or if I was playing live, it's just me sitting at home just trying to nut out certain tones and things. But all these pedals here are going through the front end of the amp, with the last one being the Boss NS2. And this is actually hooked up in the four cable method, so it's quietening the effects loop up the top as well as the front end of the amp. It doesn't make sense how that is hooked up, but you can just see by the diagram, it actually works really well. So without the Boss NS2, this is how much noise we've got going on. You can hear that quietens things down a fair bit. I'll just turn all these pedals off right now, and you can just hear what the actual amp is sounding like. So now I'll just turn the pedals on one at a time and I'll just describe what's going on with each a little tiny bit. But in the effects loop, what I've got going on is the muster effects, EQ from hell. And what's going on here is I'm really just boosting some of those lower mid frequencies and the high bass frequencies. I'm cutting the highs a little bit just to get rid of that martial snarl, but we're really just trying to hone in to try and get that angle savage that's really aggressive in those low mids. So this is engaged. <laughs> And that really helps, like you can tell, I've never really run EQs like this pushing such frequencies. I've always had the bass sort of wound back a little bit and just feeding it in as I want, but I've never had the bass sort of working with the mids and trying to get like a similar frequency going on. And since I've started doing this Marshall DSL series, a lot of you have asked for this shovel-headed kill machine tone. And being the Engel Savage 120, I've always just said, no, I can't, I can't get that tone. It's just too unique. There's something about that amp. I had no idea it was actually just those low frequencies that we can sort of hone in on. But the secret to this tone I've found is just running an overdrive into the para EQ in the front end and just boosting again and really making the amp front face react a little bit different. We've got the overall tone through the effects loop, but actually making the amp respond like an angle savage, that's a different thing. But in the front end, if we engage the wild overdrive on its own, it's just gonna tighten things up and make a really mid focused, like a high mid aggressive sort of tone. This is it here. And that actually goes away from the Engel Savage tone that's really low in those mids. But I've worked out if you actually use an overdrive, it's just boosting those frequencies a little bit and you feed that into the back of a para EQ or any EQ for that matter, it really just does it like a light through a prism and you can really just, uh, it, it enhances all the features that that EQ can deliver. So I've just found with this as well, I'm pushing those lower mid frequencies. It's very much, it just works out the same as what we're doing in the effects loop, but this just gives it a really aggressive, distinct sound. And we'll run through variations of just how to manipulate the front end, but for now, this is it. <laughs> Hey, 
Having the Para EQ in the front, it's fairly subtle as far as the way it actually changes the overall tone as such. But what it is changing a lot is the attack on the string and it actually changes the way the amp responds in like a dynamic sense. And just by varying the way that you're feeding in those frequencies, it's, it makes the guitar actually come through and be represented totally different. But this is the tone right now. And I'll just make some changes now with the EQ and you'll just hear a really big difference the way the amp actually chugs away. I guess that's pretty easy to hear there that it doesn't actually change the output tone as much. If you're just strumming chords and things, you probably wouldn't notice too much. So I guess that's it and I've never tried putting an overdrive into the back of an EQ in the front end of the amp and just knowing that it just changes things just so much. And using different overdrives, you can really just make the overdrive shine in different ways and just get the most out of that overdrive and really push those frequencies that you want. But I found this tone as well, it's just really good for a solo sort of tone as well. It's focused on those same mids. It's not too aggressive on your ears, but... <laughs> And that's an absolute savage sort of tone. It really reminds me of something that's Angle-esque and it captures that album nicely, but just using these para EQs through the front and the effect slip and boosting those low mids, the DSL lives on, it reigns supreme. It really is such a cool amp, the way that it can respond to different pedals in different ways. And all those frequencies and all those tones can just come out of it. I think it's it really is a fantastic amp. So, But all that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video today. I love using these EQs, especially now that I'm sort of starting to figure out how they can respond through the front end of the amp and really manipulate your tone to sound whatever amp that you want. And you don't have to keep buying amps. You can just use the same amp, have an EQ going through the front, along with your ODs, experiment, come up with some awesome tones. These things are absolutely unreal. So anyway, guys, take care. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.